Aaron, you know I'm a big fan of Elton John. Mm-hmm. I am a glancing fan of several of Elton John's songs. I'm going to hijack this review for a moment to ah. air one of my most, like, my biggest grievances about an Elton John song ever, which is, have you ever actually just listened to the song Rocket Man? Because it is terrible. Okay. Uh, for several... <laughs> oh, this is such a twist. For several reasons. It's like, and it's terrible because they write, you know, him and... Bernie or Barney or whatever the fuck, they write amazing songs. Rocket Man is like something that was written by an alien imposter trying to pretend to be a human being. I'm gonna start with the most annoying part of it. Mars ain't the kind of place to raise your kids. In fact, it's cold as hell. And there's no one there to raise them if you did. If you did what? If you raised your kids on Mars, there would be no one one there to raise them on Mars. If you did. (laughs) And also, no one is suggesting you raise your children on Mars. Yes, it is a paradox. It's a paradox. It's It's an Eltonian paradox. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Later, in that very same verse, and all this science I don't understand, it's just my job five days a week. A rocket man, a rocket man. See, I remember William Shatner uh, delivering that all this science I don't understand line. It was yes. fucking hilarious. And that, yeah, that becomes like unknowably pertinent when he does yeah. it. Aaron, he's an astronaut. He does understand the science. Like, do they not know what an astronaut is? An astronaut is a scientist who you send into space. All this science. I get all of this quantifiable science <laughs> that, that I don't, I don't understand. understand. <laughs> it's just my job five days a week. It, does, he, does he take... Sunday is that Sunday they off. They literally make it sound like he's a bus driver. Yeah. Like, that he doesn't take the rocket up and come back down. Like, people stay in space for a long time. Yeah, also, like, what is he... Because, yeah, is he, if he's on a mission to Mars, which mm. I guess he is, then, uh, yeah, he's going to be gone longer than the week. Five-day <laughs> missions to Mars. And this is what leads me to believe that this was written in a seriously coked-up phase. And definitely. Yeah. Do you reckon they were just, like, uh, watching an episode of Star Trek? I think it was Well, maybe even, like, the Jetsons. But I think it was worse than that. I think it was more that they drunkenly overheard someone in a pub talking about an episode of the Jetsons once <laughs> and extrapolated from that there was such a thing as space travel. And, the ro- and, the- and a rocket man. So. Shit, that's a good introduction. Okay, so, Rocket Man. A film that I have not seen. Yeah. And yet I'm going to listen to and talk about. Like any good internet denizen. <laughs> there you go. I'm the top in this ear fucking review. So we open the movie Rocket Man. There's an AA meeting. They've washed out all the colours. Everyone's wearing like white. So, you know, everyone's sitting in the circle. You know immediately what it is. Wait, this isn't a joke. It does start with an AA meeting. Yes. Amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, right? So <laughs> this tranquil scene of true human misery is interrupted by a man dressed as basically the devil okay. who is Elton John covered in sequins, horns and wings bursting through double doors and approaching this circle of you know people obviously pouring their heart out <laughs> fucking sits down in a chair having commanded all the attention and begins to quite spitefully say things like you know oh so I suppose that I'd better talk about my childhood yeah how long does this normally take and you know <laughs> In real life, those things are more a cooperative experience mm-hmm. in which everyone will talk about their day and... Well, it's like know. a collective healing process, right? Yes. Not in Rocket Man. In Rocket Man, unfortunately for these people, who may well have to relapse because of this interruption, it is now the Elton John show, because he sits down, dressed like the devil, and proceeds to talk about his entire life from start <laughs> to finish. In, well, again, so the entire framing device of Rocket Man is an AA meeting. So. Yes. Wow. And as it goes on, people, like... It, the only lines of dialogue from the people surrounding him are just them being like, so what happened next, Elton? Or, do you blame yourself, Elton? It's like, guys, you've got your own fucking problems. Like, you're addicted to heroin. This guy's a multi-millionaire. Like, nothing is really a problem for him. Is, is it Taron Egerton again? Is it like yeah, an yeah. older version of him? Or? It's, well, it's, it's him looking a bit more fucked up, but it's difficult to tell, because like I say, he's wearing a, okay. a cowl. Yeah, no, he's wearing like a devil a mask. Cowl. And as things go on... <laughs> Uh, because they're really, really clever, these people. He slowly starts tearing off parts of the costume, tears off the horns, and you know, maybe he's not such a bad guy. Oh, you know, oh, it's just the Elton who's underneath. Oh, um, uh, yeah. that's clever. Very, very clever. That's fucking bullshit. Clever movie. <laughs> okay. Very clever cool. indeed. So, like, thank you for... That's good to know. That was left mm. out of all the trailers. That mm. wasn't there at all. I'll go a bit more freeform on my notes right now. So this movie is one of the most extra movies I've maybe ever seen. Like Is that it. good or bad? Because I know, obviously, with biopics, you don't like them. I hate them. Uh, I hate musical biopics, do you, doubly so. Do you prefer 
over the top biopics because at least they're visually interesting or I think that this was visually interesting it wasn't shot particularly greatly except for maybe some of the musical scenes but I loved how in serious scenes where Elton John was talking about his pain and you know you know his friendships are breaking down he would be dressed as Elton John actually dressed in those years so in like a giant fur coat okay. with giant pink sunglasses and like a, a yep. pink cowboy hat because okay, it so, really undercuts the so, drama. Yeah. So it's like sort of like uh, like quite primitive human scenes with like this very extra man. Yes. Okay. No, I like that. Again, yeah. that's like the trailer reinforced. They reinforce mm. sort of like the the Reginald versus yep. the Elton John. Aaron, it would be like if the I drink your milkshake scene, <laughs> um, right? Like the, the whole time it plays out exactly the same way as it does. Just so much finality. This fucking weighty conclusion to this movie but the whole time Daniel Day-Lewis was dressed as a bumblebee (laughs) a giant bumblebee (laughs) so I bet you there'd there'd still be a fucking video essayist like telling telling you why that's really profound yeah if he was a bumblebee no certainly they'd be like oh this is just this is everything led up to this this was tying up all the themes of the story they'd be like imagine if he was just dressed up as a boring oil baron it just (laughs) just wouldn't have worked that would fucking suck (laughs) I, re- I really liked that about it. It was crazy. He often didn't get out of the costumes once he was back into them. And as I said to you earlier, and I'll be, I'm happy to say again, my inner gamer, who lies dormant in all of us, mm-hmm. was just like, I wish I could dress like that more often. I wish I could come into work dressed like the devil. I, I love a good fanboy costume. Even yeah. when he was just dressed up as like the baseball guy. I was yeah, like, yeah. That's a nice costume. The glittery baseball. He, he, re- he wears it well. Here's where it was just absurd. This movie is sometimes a musical, but not enough for it to not be kind of weird when it does. Okay. And also, it blends in the musical scenes with actual events from his life, and as someone with even cursory knowledge of Elton John, it's like the first song he ever plays on stage as an adult is a song from like his third or fourth album, and this is never commented on. Weird. It's, it's Crocodile Rock, and everyone starts floating while he plays it. Floating? Yeah. As in, <laughs> so there's like a disconnect from reality there as well. Yes. It's like a stylized version of yeah. his life. Okay. They start floating into the sky. That was a moment I actually liked, and I wish that they did more of that kind of like thing. Like a transcendent sort of thing. Like yeah, Showing yeah. how powerful music He's, is. He starts floating on the piano. Okay. Sick. They start floating. Later, they kind of show that they didn't understand why this was good, because there's a, there's a montage sequence to, I forget which song it is, but it's him and his evil manager, Richard Man- Madden, He's showing him what it's like being a multi-millionaire. Right. And it just goes full like pantomime. Like they're walking through these like made up sets with loads of paintings with price tags on them. And they're like pulling them off the walls okay. and dancing along. And that's, with that... That's it just, just becomes, a bit like sort of a <laughs> like comic book almost. Yeah, it becomes so unreal yeah, that yeah. it's actually annoying. Well, it's Simpsons. But equally, Elton John is weird, right? So obviously as a former mildly current, mainly air piano player nowadays, yes. uh, I... I really like Elton John. I think like his sort of music and his piano like sticks up for itself. So I like the idea. It's interesting to go that way and not mm. just focus on like the technical aspect of him. And I just no, but that's the thing. I wish they did more of that because it's like it is transcendent, man. It's fucking Elton John music. Yeah. But they did that one time and then they went into like panto musical mode for other ones. That's weird. <laughs> With and then yes, yeah, so I, I will so also. When you say musical, like do they do people start singing yes. during like okay just but, everyday life? But sometimes like it, but other times it will just be re- refined to like the show yeah yeah okay. yeah exactly like the form the formatting is completely inconsistent because like i said there's a there's a bit later on where him and bernie his songwriting partner have a fight and i'm going to touch on that later and bernie storms away and just starts singing goodbye yellow brick road <laughs> without like everything changing and it's like oh okay so we're doing it that way now and it's yeah just it's like you need to set the rules up who plays bernie by the way is anyone sh- oh, jamie, jamie bell the yeah. guy from snowpiercer I also wanted to say that when they first introduced Bernie, like retrospectively, like Elton says, you know, we've never had a fight in our entire lives. And then when they end the movie, they say they've still never had a fight. Despite the fact we've seen them have a fight? They had fights in the movie! Yeah, yeah. Like, they had they had shouting matches. Like, Elton called him, like, a traitor and stuff. That's weird. Do you reckon it's... Do you, it's but that must be, like, deliberate, right? Like that must, or do you reckon they forgot? No, I think they probably forgot. That's hilarious. Th- this movie is a lot of... They probably forgot. Because you said, like, at one point you thought that the grandmother got... De- the grandmother's death scene got edited out. That's right. Because at one point she just stops being in the film. Yeah. And Do you think she- they thought that they edited out the fights? But they're yeah, 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 exactly. in there. Exactly. <laughs> she, she returns in the AA scene later mm. uh, as, like, ghost version of herself. <laughs> like I say, like, given that it's his production company doing this, Alan John's production company, you think he might have, like, reviewed the final this was, draft? This was his idea. <laughs> most people just wait... Like, most people don't get to produce their own biopic. No. The vain bastard. 
bastards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> most people have to. Most people just don't, and then die, and then they get have it made for them. But I like that he couldn't wait. He had to see what it looked like. He had to peek beyond the fucking he's, he's, mail. He's gonna watch it all the fucking time. And uh-huh. th- th- this leads comfortably into one of my other points. So, as is known generally, Elton John was very briefly married to a woman in a cruel charade. Yeah, a, four, a, four, a four-year beard. <laughs> yes. So, in this movie, he's really fucked up. He's no longer with Richard Madden, who's his pure evil manager, who turns pure evil on the turn of a fucking dime, just starts beating him up outside of a telephone box, having been really nice up until that point. Right. <laughs> he's recording music, and he's recording it really badly, and it's not good, and it's all coked up. And he starts singing Don't Let the Sun Go Down On Me, and the sound engineer, who is this woman, walks in and starts singing it to him, Okay. okay, then it's like, okay, I guess this is kind of relevant. He's like, don't let the sun go down on me. I don't want to get so fucked up that I die. Cut. Now, they're walking out of a church together. Richard Madden, his abusive ex-boyfriend, and his songwriter, both of whom know he's gay, are standing behind him. So I guess the implication is like, oh, Elton has convinced himself that he could be straight now, uh, based okay. off the nasty things his mother had said. Right, done. Cut. Now, they walk out of separate bedrooms in the same house. Cut again. They sit down at breakfast together, okay? The maid's scurrying around around them. Elton John is sitting across from her. He pulls out a bottle of vodka, fills a pint glass half full, and then pours the orange juice in to complete it. Looks at her, says, I'm sorry. Starts drinking it. And then they're divorced. Wow. Well, so that whole thing happens in several, like, four scenes. The whole... (laughs) That plays out, as in that enormous chapter of Elton John's life, in less time than it took for me to tell you about it. In a movie that's like two hours less, long. Less time than it took any one of the songs. There you go. <laughs> like, wow. And, and it's never referenced again. Because I, I would almost <laughs> say that you could do that to a montage. Like, that would be quite... Yeah, yeah. You've got, like, one of the sorrowful songs and, like, uh, overla- it overlaid it with his marriage being torn apart. That would be charming. And then, not only that, but when the movie ends, after, you know, all of this coke use and just abuse and self-hate, <laughs> he goes to rehab... Bernie comes and gives him some new songs and is like, yeah, you should hit that piano again, man. I know it's hard when you're not on drugs. Mm. Then just spits out a cliche about him thinking that he won't be good anymore without drugs, which they didn't really set up. I was going to say, is it ever implied that when John is a savant because of his drug no, usage? No, not at all. The, the piano is something that is not easy to play on drugs in he my gets, experience. He gets well into drugs <laughs> way late in the movie. <laughs> So, and then they cut to the video for the song I'm Still Standing from the album Too Low for Zero. Right. And the funny thing about that video is they've used the actual video and then they've CG'd Taron Egerton into it over where Elton John is. But it's they've tried to downgrade the quality of the video so it looks like he's in it. But also he has to be bigger than Elton John so you can't see Elton John moving behind him. So he's just really Whoa. large in all the frames. That's amazing. Well, so he looks like a, like a meatloaf or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the point of all this is, so that's where they choose to end the movie. And it's like, and then they say he's been sober for 26 years. I'm like, listen, guys, I don't want to be a dick here. But I don't think that's true. Because just Googling shows that he was married to that woman and, you know, drinking loads because of it after Too Low for Zero was released. This movie is a fucking coke-headed fantasy. I guess maybe... It's a fugue state yeah. on film. I guess Elton John wanted, like, to write the record and be able to jack off to it. But, well, yeah, like, while still alive. So I guess he had to rush it out and, like, write his narrative. Props to him. Like, fuck. Because, like, the thing is, as well, like, he's playing the game right. Like, people aren't going to read that book that he puts out later this year, right? Yeah. But they are going to watch this, and they're going to assume this is his life. And in some, like, 1984 shit, as long as everyone's assuming this is what his life was like, then it basically is. Yeah, yeah. So he's done it. Yeah. He's fucking some sort of memory heist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which will, will fool everyone except for himself. And you. Yes, and, and me. And now me until I finish this beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make a closing statement on this movie in that... As I said, it, w- it wasn't clear to me until part way through that in fact it wasn't just some people who hated Elton, such as like his dad. Actually, they all hated him. Like Ooh, his you mom. haven't mentioned his dad. What is his dad? What is his, is his dad? His like dad just kind of shows up at the beginning. Stoic, as... stoic, southern man. Yes. Okay. Yes, he could not be more like. It, it's <laughs> just like, don't cry, you woofed her. Okay. <laughs> he hates Elton. He won't hug him. Later, he goes and has his own family. He could not be more of a cartoon hater of Elton John. Okay. And then it turns out... See, his hatred of his son was so big that I didn't realise until later in the film that his mum also hated Elton. When it's because he was, she, she was being overshadowed in the hate game. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he comes out to her on the phone in a hilarious scene, which will be meme to hell when it's on YouTube. He's like, I'm gay. He's in a phone box. 
He then goes through a bunch of slurs like I'm a puffter. I'm this oh no, that. yeah. that's not how you do it. But with, that's, that's like brass eye. Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> it is like brass eye. There's like there's there's beats between the lines. He's pulling faces as though he's really stressed, but it's just insane faces. And then she's like, "Oh, I know, but it's terrible." That's amazing. So every, everyone everyone hates him. You know, his manager turns pure evil and starts exploiting him. So all I know is that people spin on a dime and exploit him and hate him. But at no point in this movie did I even know who Elton John was. Like, they never imbued him with a personality. What he, he stands for. He, he was a guy who played piano yeah. and liked men, yep. which, yeah, they just threw him into bed with someone. And then he really liked cocaine. And they didn't even prove to me how much he really liked cocaine, because it's actually a fact that he has confirmed himself that at the height of it, he was taking cocaine every four minutes <laughs> off his waking life. <laughs> Put that in the fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, that, that's amazing. But then equally, I guess this is the problem when, like, the producer of the film is the guy making it, is that you can only portray him so badly, and you probably have to brush over some of the unfortunate parts of his life, like his four-year uh, charade of a marriage. I guess this is why people shouldn't direct or shouldn't produce their own biopics. No. It's because that their, their meddling hand will make it seem like some sort of, like you said, surreal masturbatory fugue state. I just, I don't <laughs> understand though why he was willing to show himself having his life ruined by cocaine, but not admit that it was every four minutes. I think, you know? it's, I think it's because like one seems tragic and the other seems excessive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's probably because it would isolate the mum audience. It's like, oh, it's so sad that he's an addict. Maybe yeah. it's like, shit, he was he really had, an addict. He, he had enough money to do coke every four minutes and then rehabilitate himself. Yeah. There you go. And fuck, he's still alive. <laughs> he's fucking still alive. Yeah. I'm still standing, as he sang, mm. before getting into a charade of a marriage. What was the, the closing point? Mm. The single gay sex scene in it was uh, refreshingly gratuitous, hey. but not gratuitous enough. I mean, only, like a 15? I don't know, I assume... I, so, all I, it did was show two men passionately kissing each other on no, a bed some, with shirt, shirts off, which I never reason, see. For but. some reason, I assume, like, the, the ratings board is inherently, le like, levelling homosexual sex is more... More explicit. Yeah, than yeah, yeah. heterosexual sex, which is obviously wrong, and it no one will call is. out, but... Mm. I'm guessing this, that made it like a 15 or something. It's just a shame though, isn't it, Aaron? Because, you know, in the version that we've been dreaming up before we started recording, in a socially just world, we'd see Elton John's ring piece. It might even be old Elton John's ring piece. Yeah. I yeah. assume he would want that edited in there. Like, maybe like a Lucas filmed in. I mean, obviously what I would want... <laughs> Jar Jar Binks a montage. popping out of his asshole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a montage of him just fucking men to Crocodile Rock. Yeah, I would enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. The closest thing they get is this euphemistic bit where he's clearly in he's clearly in a gay bar, or well, a gay club, I should say, and there's just, like, crowds of dudes, and he's, like, crowd surfing over them, and they're all grabbing him, and, okay. like, then they're kind of dancing around him prov provocatively. But there's no dicks in ass, Chapman. No. And what's the point, if not... Completely sick world we're living in.